Good day everyone, meteorologist Mark Mulner here. How's everybody getting along? I hope you had a good Christmas. I had a good Christmas as well. We're going to get us through New Year's next and beyond. But you know what we're going to have to deal with here? A massive firecracker ridge into parts of the east. Take a look at that massive ridge building here. And a trough will be building out west. So yeah, we're going to be looking at major ridging here across the east. And as you can see here, take a look at this. We're going to be seeing that cold air erode in the east. And look at this massive amount of warmth there. You see the yellows going up there into parts of the northeast just in time for your New Year's Day. We're going to take a look and see how long that lasts. And take a look at the upper air 500 millibar flow here again. Take a look at that. That's that massive firecracker ridge up here in the northeast. Uh, let's get into it. And one quick food for thought here. Yeah, this is showing up later on next week on the European model. Take a look at that. If this materializes, we could have a pretty good interior snowstorm for parts of interior northeast. Uh, let's get into all the details. All right, so there is something I want to throw out here. You know, the Euro's going gangbusters with the snow out west here. You can see uh, this takes us through Friday, January 6th. But look what's going on here. Yeah, you have the snow in the plains here uh, with that uh, central system. But look at this here across the east. We're going to talk more about this. Um, the GFS is hinting at something too right around Friday, uh, January 6th. So we'll have to watch this. This is getting, you know, far out here on our scale. But yeah. It's something definitely to talk about, but it's, you know, beyond like 10 days. So, you know, it's right at the end of our 10 day mark. So something that's going to bounce around quite a bit, but we might be looking at some sort of nor'easter here. Right, so as we take a look at what the euro is hinting right around that time, that end of that first week of January here. So yeah, as we get towards Thursday, the 5th, here is that system there digging across the Gulf of Mexico. It's actually going to be a Gulf of Mexico storm. I'll show you momentarily in the surface maps. You know, it's really curious that uh, it's even kind of showing up here because I'm a little skeptical because look how, look at these high heights here. There it is. It's showing up here on the European model, but essentially by this point, Friday uh, the 6th, we're showing snow up here in the northeast. So I'm a little bit skeptical about, you know, the disconnect here between the 500 millibar layer and the surface layer, so to speak. All right, so as we take a look at the NAO index, yeah, you guessed it. We are pretty positive now. So essentially what we're looking at here is we're looking at a pattern that's going to promote, it's going to stay pretty positive here through at least the second week of January. And that's going to be no blocking here across northeastern North America and Greenland. So those big East Coast snowstorms, the chances of them happening are a lot less. All right, so taking a look at the polar vortex overview, let's see what's going on here. So it's centered right over the pole now. As we go in time, Wednesday the 28th, Thursday the 29th, Friday, you see which way it's heading? It's heading in our respect here north of the pole. It's retreating. It's retreating and consolidating into one cell. For those of you that like snow in the east, that's not good news. But as we get to Tuesday, here it is, January 10th. See how it kind of starts slipping back south of the pole for us? And you start getting... It's still one solid cell. You kind of want to see it broken up a bit. But you start to see the heights lowering here and some stratospheric warming here on the west side with respect to us. And that's where we st could start to see a pattern change closer to the mid part of January. So going ahead with temperature anomalies, this is going to be the big story over the next several days. Take a look at this. The pattern is flipping. We are seeing these massive temperature anomalies especially across eastern canada and the northeast and the east coast here as we get into the weekend take a look at that the big warming trend continues there it is out west your cold spell and then back east you're just in firecracker weather here compared to what your normals are and look at that by tuesday the third right after new year's we're getting 20 some degrees above average here look at that some areas 30 some degrees it is just going to be crazy warm as we get into the new year, yes, we do have a quick cool down just in time of that time frame that we might see some sort of nor quick nor'easter in the northeast. We'll see if that materializes. All right, so we're going to start off with the HRRR model here. And as you can see, most of the activity is starting out west. This is going to be the common theme. And look how quiet it is in the east. Yes, we're really cold. We do have some moisture up here in the northern UP of Michigan as well. But the big story is going to be out west here. And let's take a look as we go out in time. Things are going to get uh, pretty interesting out west here. 
But look at back east. The only thing I really can talk about here in the near term, here's Wednesday. We're going to have some accumulating snow, but it's going to be mainly north. St. Lawrence Valley on north, westward here into southern Ontario and Quebec. That's where we're going to see probably several inches of snow with this clipper. This clipper is going to stay to the north, and it's going to help our warming trend begin. Now let's uh, see if we can get this to go a little bit further out here. As we go out in time, take a look at this. So yeah, that's going to move and pivot towards the northeast. Clip northern Maine here across the central part of the United States. This is where that next system is going to start to develop. And out west here, we have our next big system moving in with mountain snow and valley rain. Look at that. That's a pretty major storm here that we're going to be dealing with here across the west. But take a look at this back east. We're going to watch this kind of unfold here as we go through the next 48 hours. And yeah, we're going to see some wintry precipitation up here in the north. And we'll see some stronger thunderstorms. I don't think anything too terribly severe here across Louisiana into Thursday afternoon. And we do start to get some showers here around the eastern lakes. And there's northern Maine getting clipped here. All right, so as we pick up with our future radar with the NAM 3 kilometer after 48 hours here. Take a look at this. Yeah, the west is getting pummeled here. Essentially, this is picking up Thursday afternoon. You're getting a tremendous amount of snow. Look at this inland here from parts of the Sierra Nevada eastward to parts of Nevada and up here into Washington and Oregon. Lots of heavy rain and mountain snow. But as we head across the central states, this system is kind of starved for moisture, so to speak. You can see we're actually going to have some rain showers up into parts of the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes. And as we continue in time, you can see that kind of sticks around much of the Great Lakes. And we get a few showers moving in as this warm front moves in across the northeast. Temperatures are really going to be soaring. We start to get some heavier rains here in the mid-Mississippi River Valley southward to the Gulf Coast. You can see some of these heavier showers showers and look at this out west we're going to continue take the last frame here look at this yeah this is some big old moisture heading right into the pacific northwest all right so let's take you through the gfs here we start with the, the our synoptic view here as there's that system out west and the central states and take a look at friday here so this is where we start to get that pattern change things really start to break down out west all this snow here in the inner mountain west and parts of the southwest as well that's pretty interesting but this system here in the east is moisture starved with the exception for down south where we could see some shower and thunderstorm activity now watch as we go out in time here take a look at this we're going to get the big scale picture look at this this trough is really digging out west lots of uh, snow here in nevada and parts of northern california but as we head back east this system kind of becomes more of a rainstorm, so to speak. And look at that. By Let's take New Year's Eve here, for example. There's 10 p.m., New Year's Eve. There it is. We can, we can go between 10 and 1 p.m. here. It's going to be close, you know, for New Year's celebrations here along the East Coast. It, it's going to be showery off and on, but it's not going to be too bad. Out west here, that's where things are kind of going downhill. Look at that Los Angeles heavy rain. So yeah, you're going to see some activity out west here in the inner Mount West as we get into Sunday, New Year's Day. Now take a look at this. Yeah, this system becomes a big deal here across the northern plains. But look at the southerly winds as Dragon North. So yeah, we're going to see another week, a big week here of firecracker type weather. Big snows here on the northern edge, probably blizzard-like conditions here. And as we continue to go in time, you can see the overall storm pattern. We're not looking at anything too major here across the east. And out west, that's where we're going to see all those major storms continue to plow into the coastline here, bring some mountain snow. Look at that. We get potentially towards the end of the first week of January. We, It's kind of hinting at maybe a nor'easter here. We'll have to keep an eye on this if enough cold air works in behind it and enough dynamics. But as you can see... We have a lot of rainstorms in parts of the east here. And, you know, we're getting pretty far out here, but the overall pattern is favoring at least through mid-January here. These storms heading, you know, these Colorado lows forming and pushing across the Plain States here. All right, so taking a look at the latest European model run here, the west is where the big weather is going to be. High pressure is going to be in dominant control here across much of the east, you can see. And look at that, that trough digging out west, yes, you get a temporary high building in here, but that's going to be really short-lived as we go in time. Here is this pattern we've got going on here. Lots of systems plowing into California, heading across the northern plains, and that area of high pressure keeps us very much uh, quiet across much of the east until we get towards New Year's Day. Now, there's that system across the Intermountain West that 
plows in and causes all this mountain snow. Nevada is going to be cold. So is Utah. This system is going to really spiral in the plains. You see lots of showers and thunderstorms. We could have some severe weather here uh, come New Year's weekend. So please stay tuned for that. That could be big. And that's the end of our model run here. If we take the previous, the 12Z Euro here, take a look here. We can head beyond this weekend. There, let's just pause that. There it is. So this low is going to head up through the Ohio Valley. It's going to drag a lot of warm air. It's got a lot of warm air to work with. We might have thunderstorms all the way up to the Mason-Dixon line, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on here. It is a pretty strong low, so I expect wind gusts to really start ramping up here, but it's not good. It's not going to be anything like our bomb cyclone that we just saw. Now, here's that system into the Intermountain West. This is something we got to watch as this digs and this is going to set the stage for quite a stormy week as we get into the central plains here. Let's back that up just a few frames. There it is Monday morning as you're going off to work in school. This is going to be a big deal. And we're going to have severe weather here on the eastern side of this. We have another system plowing into the west coast and an area of high pressure in the east keeping it very quiet. As we continue in time, look how quickly this moves to the east. This is a very fast-moving system. By Tuesday the 3rd, it's cruising all the way up into the upper Midwest, dragging lots of showers and thunderstorms back east here. And as we go in time, we have another rainmaker here developing across the southeast, although this low-pressure system, this may be something we need to watch if we get enough cold air funneling behind this low-pressure system. This is something I definitely want to keep an eye on. There it is. Let's just back that up one frame. This would be a prime snowstorm for interior parts of the northeast. You have that classic high pressure to the north. Take a look at that. That is something we definitely have to keep an eye on as we go out here in time. It is a quick mover, though, so it won't stall for very long. And as we take a look at the European model here, take a look at this. So this takes us through New Year's. Actually, let's just back that up slightly. Here we go. So yeah, Monday the 2nd. Take a look at this. So here's our weekend system here across the east, amounting to mostly in a three quarters of an inch on average, most areas where you see the darker uh, colors like the red, the purples, the reds, um, the oranges. That's where we're going to get beyond, say, an inch and a half, two inches here. Look at out west, though. This is where the moisture is definitely going to be. So what's total liquid precipitation looking like here? On the GFS, we'll take it through New Year's first here. Take a look at this. So yeah, with this weekend storm, we're looking at generally uh, mostly under an inch. But some of these areas in the southeast, two to three inches around Georgia, parts of Alabama here, according to the GFS. And look at out west here. This is where we're going to see the most storminess out of this pattern. All right, so for my tropical friends, you're in paradise here across the Caribbean, parts of Latin America, Central America, Mexico. Look at this. This is Friday, Saturday, the 31st of December, last day of the year, and there we go, 2023. We're kicking it off with a party here in the Caribbean. Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful time of year. This is your time of year to really bask in the greatness all the way through Thursday, January 12th. Enjoy. All right, so the Western Pacific, we do have some activity. We do have something here into the Indian Ocean. Look at this. Tropical Cyclone Darien. We're still dealing with that 90 mile per hour winds, but this is going to be heading into the southern portion there and weakening. Look at that. Yeah, the intertropical convergence zone. This is your time of year for Australia. Look at this. But look at this feature just east of the Philippines. Let's take a look at this. Let's zoom in here. So we got some interesting weather here. Um, I don't think this is going to develop into anything, but look at this. This is Wednesday, the 28th, into. See how it gets kind of caught up in the west release? So it's going to move really fast as it gets caught up in the west release. And by Friday the 30th, look at this. Yeah, most of the inclement weather is over here just south of Vietnam. So we might have some sort of tropical system developing, but look at this. The Philippines are looking nice. Let's zoom out and see what it looks like for your New Year's weekend here. Yeah, this is Sunday at 1 p.m. So we go back to New Year's Eve. Your New Year's Eve looks a bit rainy here across the southern and central Philippines. I hate to say that, but unfortunately, that's what we're looking at. However, if you're in extreme southern Philippines or the northern Philippines, extreme northern Philippines, you're actually looking pretty clear. So not looking too bad, but New Year's Day itself gets a bit rainy here. Um, and then as we head into Monday the 2nd and into the 3rd, Things get really rainy here. The good news is there doesn't look like any one of these entities are going to develop into anything tropical. As we go west here towards Vietnam, 
We're going to have some moisture as well getting into this region, but we'll take a look at this. Yeah, we're going to have some heavier rain moving into the eastern and southern Philippines here by Friday the 6th, but that kind of dissipates, and we do have a system here in the north central Philippines you can see. Take a look at this. This is Saturday, uh, January 7th, so we got a feature here that we're going to have to keep an eye on. And that's going to continue to pivot towards the north and get caught up in the west release again. There is a lot of wind shear, and that's the great news. But look at this. As we get towards the, let's see, the second week there of January, it's actually not looking too bad. And I don't really foresee any major development of any typhoons here in the near future. And Jim here from Groton, Connecticut. South of Groton, Connecticut, you can see ocean of ocean snow effect clouds. Take a look at that. You don't... You don't see that too often, but with this system, this bomb cyclone to the northwest over inland, you saw quite a bit in the way of ocean effect snow going on, this phenomenon that's very rare, and uh, he captured it this past Saturday, uh, Christmas Eve, on the 24th here. Nice capture here, Jim. All right, so as we take a look at the temperatures here, we're starting off with your Wednesday. This is that surge of warm air across the east, your 32-degree line going way up into Canada here. This is your thaw you've been waiting for. It will help melt a lot of that snow and ice, and maybe you'll get some rain to, you know, wash some of that salt off the roads as well. Look how quickly things are warming up, though. Yeah, the cold Arctic air retreats pretty much here in North Dakota and Minnesota, uh, but look at this, this 50 degree line all the way up here into parts of the Northeast for Friday. And here's your New Year's weekend. If you have any New Year's festivities, it's actually looking fairly decent here. There's not any major snowstorms back east. Uh, west, that's where we got the cold air blasting south here. But look at this, the 60 degree line is pretty far to the north here as we go into New Year's Day. And then we head into your new week of the new year. Look at that. Mid to upper 50s here into the northeast. That's almost unheard of for this time of year. All right, so the week ahead for my hometown viewers, being into Descranton's upper Susquehanna River Valley. Take a look at this. So we get into Wednesday. We're going to see those clouds burn off, sunny skies. It's going to get into the 40s. And look at that. We're going to be pushing 50 degrees come Friday in the weekend sun. But look at that. Clouds will roll in later Saturday and New Year's Eve and night. Rain will be the name of the game here. Uh, we'll probably look up to a half to three quarters of an inch of rain, but very mild. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Weather Northeastern. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Get out there and enjoy. Visit me on social media, Facebook and Media Mark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern. MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Twitter, at WeatherEastern. Thank you for joining me. Winter weather outlook is in the description down below.